Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about sponges. The different sponges I use and why I use certain sponges with certain stencils. So I'm gonna go over stencils as well. Now the sponges I'm gonna show you all have different properties and some I like to use for certain things over other things. So I'm going to show you those, tell you what brands I use and why I like certain sponges over other sponges. Also give you some stencil tips. So stay tuned and I will give you some tips on sponges and stencils. Okay, so this green sponge is the Fantasy Worldwide sponge. It actually comes in a teardrop shape, but it's much larger. I cut this one when I received it. These are quite large. Um, it's also a light, airy foam, so it's not very dense, it's not too thick, but for little kids' faces, so this is the cut sized down version that's a little stained, as you can see. And even on my face, if I was doing a butterfly, that's a huge butterfly, and I cut this. Not very well, mind you, because it's a little crooked. They're not easy to cut, so um, I do use these, and, and they're perfectly fine. However, I will show you a better teardrop-shaped sponge that I like to use even more. So this is the teardrop sponge I prefer to use, especially for butterflies. It's the Always Wicked Art Butterfly Sponge, as I believe what it's called, and I will put links to all of these sponges below this video. So as you can see, it's a really, really nice shape, and it's small. So on little kids' faces, you can really get into the corner of their eye and get a nice pressed butterfly with this, and it's not too large. This is also a looser density of foam. Um, you can see it's porous. There's some air going through this, but it works really, really well. It picks up paint well, and I really, really like these. Um, if you are struggling with butterflies or the shape of your butterflies, these can really, really help because you can kind of press two daubs of this to create the top wing and then one push of this for the bottom wing and you have a really, really easy butterfly and it's created the shape for you. So if you struggle with butter butterflies, I suggest getting one of these or a pack of them. They're awesome. So the next sponge I'm going to show you is the Krivlin black sponge. Um, this is large and I'll show you just in proportion to my face. It is quite large. You could certainly use this for butterflies, but you're probably going to have to pinch this together a lot to do it so that you're not overwhelming a child's face. I do use these for backgrounds a lot um, with my rainbow cakes. Now one of the difference with the Krivlin black sponges, one they don't stain which is awesome because you can wash these over and over again and sometimes they have a little bit of a haziness to them um, and some lint which I have on mine, but they don't stain the way these do. So this is the Wolf uh, Wolf Brothers sponge. Now the difference between these two, the Krivlin is super dense. It's a very, very thick weave of a sponge. So there's not a lot of air moving through this. You do have to really, really work these into your split cakes to get a really, really good coverage because it's so dense. Unlike these Wolf Brothers sponges, which are a synthetic sponge, but you can see the difference. You can see those little air pockets in this sponge. It allows for more friction when you're going into your split cakes and you're rubbing this back and forth. The air and the, the space in between this weave is going to pick up your paint quicker. It also is going to hold more water. So this denser sponge can sometimes be a little bit easier because you can't overload it. Now, in relation to these sponges, I like all of these sponges and I use them all, but I use them for different things. I love the Krivlin black sponge for backgrounds. I love this when I want a really heavy full coverage. So if I'm going to be sponging on someone's entire face, I like to use this because I know I can pick up a lot of paint. 
So that's the difference between these four sponges. Again, I'm gonna put the links of all of these below. And now I'm gonna talk about which sponges I like to use with my stencils and a little bit about my stencils as well. Okay, so now a little bit about stencils and the sponges I use with my stencils. So I have the full collection of the BAM stencils and some more stencils beyond that. So when you do purchase the full collection of BAM stencils, they do come on this ring and then you also get this little bag that they come in, which is great, nice to keep them organized. However, when I get to an event, I pull my most popular stencils off of this ring because I, as I've seen people do this and that's fine if it works for you, but I can't do this on a kid's face and have these hanging down. It does not work for me. So I usually pull out my, um, my snowflakes, my leopard, um, just a few stars or one that I always pull out, some animal prints, the ones I know I'm going to use 20 times, right? So I pull those out of the ring and I put the rest of these and I have some like oddball stencils that don't really fit on my ring well. So I stick the ones that I'm probably not going to use into my bag and then I have a piece of Velcro on the back of my bag and this Velcros to my craft and go, which you can see in other videos about my craft and go. And that way they're accessible and easy to get if I decide I wanna use a stencil, but they're not mucking up my table and my kit and getting in the way. So the popular stencils that I do pull out and I want to have handy and easily accessible to me, I have this little container that magnets to the back wall of my craft and go. And I go ahead and just slip a few of those popular stencils that I know I want into this and then they're easily accessible to me. I can grab them. Um, I can also throw a couple sponges in there if I want my sponges to be easily accessible. So that's what I do with my stencils. Now, as far as sponging and your stencils go. So when using your stencils, you do have to think about the coverage of the stencil and what might work best. If you have a stencil that has a larger opening like this and you're going to have a larger design that you're pressing into the skin, using um, sponges like this are going to get that design onto the skin a lot easier. So using the wool for the Krivlin sponge to sponge that on is going to give you better coverage. Now, if you have a stencil where the design is really, really minimal and it's mainly stencil, then I would suggest using one of these little finger daubers because you're really gonna be able to focus on that intricate cutout and get the paint in there. Now, I also really like using the finger daubers for all stencils because this is a really, really dense, thickly packed foam. It's hard to overload this and get it too watery. One of the biggest problems with using regular sponges and your stencils is that people load them up and it's too wet. So you go to plop this onto a kid's face and you've got such a wet coverage on your sponge that when you lift this off, you've got a few stencil lines, but your paint has bled through and you basically have a blob on the kid's face, right? One of the best things you can do to prevent this from happening is one, spray your sponge instead of your cake. So instead of getting a ton of water on your cake and then going in and having to soak it all up with your sponge, get a limited amount of water on your sponge and then go into your cake. You're going to have more control. The other thing that I would suggest you do is every single time you go to sponge a stencil on a kid's face or your face or whoever's face you're doing this on, test it on your wrist. During that job, my entire arm is covered in sponge marks. Before, I apply this to a kid's face after I've rubbed it through my rainbow cake or one stroke or whatever I'm using, I quickly test it on my wrist and make sure it's not runny. That saves me so much trouble because I know when I go to apply that stencil to a kid's face, it is not going to run underneath. 
Now, if you go and apply it to your wrist and it does look watery or looks like it's starting to beat up, it's too wet. Don't use it. You have a couple options. Go back into your split and keep working the paint in until it's dry enough or take a towel, dab the water out on a towel, then go back into your paint and make sure you have good coverage, okay? The best way I can describe the consistency you want of your paint on a sponge is you want it to be kind of sticky and almost hard to press onto the skin. So if you press paint onto your arm and it's sliding down your arm, it is too wet. If you go and you press down and it's almost hard to get any coverage and it's a little sticky, that's the consistency you want your paint to be when you are stenciling with sponges. So keep that in mind. It's a really hard thing. I mean, people think that uh, stencils are cheating and that they're too easy and, oh, everybody can do that. Sponges are one of the hardest things to grasp as a face painter. They can add a lot of interest, save you a ton of time at festivals, but they can be really, really hard. So just practice and hopefully these tips will help you. Now when it comes to cleaning your sponges and your stencils, my stencils, I just run under water and get all the paint off. Here's some dirty ones that I, were, I was using this last weekend. Um, so just... If you're on the job and you need to clean them, a wet wipe will do or you know, spray it with water and a towel to, to clean it up. But once I get home, I throw these in the sink and I just rub a little bit of soap on them and water and they come clean so, so well. Now when you're cleaning your sponges, you do want to take a you know organic, non-scented bar soap under the sink to start get it lathered up, squeeze out all that excess paint until they're running clean. And then I put them right in my working bag. This one again is dirty, I haven't done this yet. So word to the wise, clean your sponges and your bag, okay? Um, which I will do tonight. So once I, once I get all the gunk out of them and there's no paint running out of my sponges. I throw them in the laundry bag, which this is what I keep them in at the job too. I just clip this to my craft and go and I have a dirty and a clean bag. So I pull from all my clean sponges and once I use it, I stick it in the dirty. And then you do want to sanitize these. So you want to just zip up your laundry bag and I do need to clean this before I do this too. And then throw it in the washer Get a soap that is not, you don't want to use Tide or your regular washing machine soap. No fabric softener, nothing fancy. I think the best thing is the, there's a baby soap um, that I still have from when my daughter was little because you don't have to use a ton of it. But use like an organic, non-scented, sensitive skin um, baby soap in your washer so that you're not adding any toxins into your sponges and run it on the hottest cycle that you have and it's going to help sanitize those sponges and get them clean really, really fast. You're gonna spend less time trying to wash them all out by hand when you do that. Then to dry, if you have a cookie rack that you would use to cool cookies on, lay them out on that because it's going to let them air dry consistently and, and not create any kind of mold or anything. If you don't have that, lay them out on a towel and then just rotate them every couple hours so they dry consistently and one side isn't sitting with water on it and getting kind of ooky. So. I hope that helps. Those are my tips for sponges and for stencils. If you guys have any questions at all, please let me know and I hope this video helped you out.